What's up everyone, Vam Calf back again. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the Tiny 8X again. I've had this guy for about a month and I love everything about it. <laughs> this quad is great. Uh, and if you haven't checked it out, I'll leave a link below to the review that I did of this. And man, it, this, this thing is just incredible, but there's one downfall, one downfall, and it is the VTX antenna. And uh, when I go ahead and break it down at the bench, I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. And if you have a Tiny Series by King Kong or LDARC, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, the reception and the distance you can get isn't bad, but it's not good. Uh, so we're going to do a little upgrade to the antenna. So why don't we go ahead and tear into this guy and see what we're looking at. Okay, so when we go ahead and pop this canopy off, you'll see on the inside that the antenna is just a single strand of copper wire. This is called a whip antenna, and it's either a single strip of wire like this or it's braided wire. Most of the time you're, you'll see the uh, whip style antennas like on your receiver. I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's... This, oh god, I can't even, where's a point, where's a pointer crying out loud? I need a chopstick like UAV features, futures, <laughs> features. So like right here, that is a whip antenna and this one's braided. So most of the time you'll see whip antennas used for uh, receivers, but I they don't work, for me they don't work, I don't think they work that great for VTX. So what we're going to do is swap this out for a linear antenna. And I know some of you guys will say, well, why aren't you using a circularized? Well, we're trying to make this as crash proof and resistant as possible. Honestly, I could get probably further distance with the circularized or circular polarized antenna, but we're just going to go with a simple linear antenna, like our little, you know, people are calling these dipoles, but I, I honestly, I don't think they're dipoles because you need two coming out to the side. But anyways, so all this is, is the linear antenna is going to be like a coaxial style where you'll have, oh geez, if you can just focus for me, please, that would be great. There we go. So what you can see here is you have this outer coating. Under here is this little bell, metal bell that's uh, kind of like a ground, or it's like a, a, a ground shield. And then out here is an exposed uh, your your uh, source signal. So if you come all the way down to the bottom, that very tip right here on the tip, that's your send. That's your source signal. Above that, you'll see there's this little tubing, which is usually PTFU or some kind of dielectrical um, shielding in between uh, the send. And then this, this braided wire that you'll see, uh, this is going to be your earth ground. Uh, to eliminate, uh, what do they call them, EMIs, the electromagnetic interference. So you have to ground this shield. So I'm going to show you how we can get around that with the flight controller on the Tiny Series. So I'm going to go ahead and get the soldering iron fired up, get this all tinned up and ready to go, and I'll show you the process to get it all installed into our Tiny Flight Controllers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is pretty simple, is we're just going to hold the soldering iron against the back of the original antenna pot and just lightly pull on the antenna and it pops right out. What you're going to want to do is just make sure that the through hole is cleared out. Of course, it's not going to focus. So you're going to want to make sure that the through hole kind of dirty a little bit of flux but this through hole you want to make sure that that is cleared out because we're going to be putting the tip of our linear antenna through there all right so next we're going to go ahead and prep the antenna okay so the two things you're going to need to prep the antenna is to uh, tin this outer shielding and tin the tip and also you're going to need a wire yeah, about an inch long or so. 
and same deal uh, it's not gonna zoom tin both tips and then one side you're gonna want the wire a little long and tin that also and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna tack it to this outer shield right here so tack it just means you just want it to stick not permanent just stick Come on. Okay, and once it's tacked in place, we're just going to take that wire. I mean, you're probably not going to be able to see it because it doesn't zoom for snickers. There we go. So, all we're going to do is just wrap that around this outer shield. Sorry, my finger's just gonna have to be in the way. Wrap it around this outer shield, that braided shielding. Like so. And you'll go back in with the soldering iron. And finish the soldering job. Okay, and now let's go ahead and see where the, all this nonsense goes on the flight controller. Okay, so remember that through hole that we wanted to clean out? That's where the tip of your linear cable is going to go. So feed that through. Once that's in there, take your soldering iron from the other side, which you, of course, you can't see. Good job on my part. And once that's soldered in place, give her a little tug to make sure it's stuck. And we'll check the back, make sure that it's soldered. And we can add a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit more solder to that. There we go. Now the fun part. So the wire that we had around that outer shield, you're going to go ahead and connect it to your receiver ground. Where are my tweezers? Not the prettiest. <laughs> but now we're all soldered on there so this is where you just need to piggyback the ground off of this and then just to hold it all in place I'll put a little bit of hot glue right here and then bend the antenna down so I I guess I could show you guys that too so grab a little bit of hot glue So a little bit of hot glue back behind here, a little on front, and then I'm just going to go ahead and bend this back a little bit more on front. 
You guys can use a gun. <laughs> I don't bother because it takes too long to heat up just for that little bit of glue. But all, all this is doing is some guys are completely against hot glue. But in this case, it's absolutely necessary because all you have holding your antenna to the board is that tiny little VTX pot port. I keep getting corrected by calling them pots and not ports, but so I got to start making a conscious effort to stop calling them pots. But uh, <laughs> so that's the only thing that was holding our antenna in place. So now we'll go outside and give it a little test to see how much further we can get um, range. And uh, the first video will be of uh, the stock antenna. And then the second video will be the antenna upgrade. So as you can see, it's not night and day difference, but it does clear up the signal, I feel, quite a lot. So success? <laughs> I'm going to do a couple more tests to see how far out I can get with the new uh, linear antenna. But uh, if you enjoyed this project or anything else I've done, uh, feel free to subscribe and Click that little bell to get notifications when I have new videos posted. Uh, until then, happy flying and have fun out there.